Hi, sport, said Dad. Bat didn't like being called sport because he didn't like playing sports or watching sports. Bat liked being called Bat because he liked playing with animals and reading about animals and watching videos about animals. But Dad didn't like calling him Bat. When he wasn't calling Bat sport, he was always calling him Bigsby Alexander. It's a great name, he liked to say. It was an okay name. Bat's first name, Bigsby, had been his mom's last name before she got married. Now that she had Dad were divorced, she could have made it her last name again, but she kept Tam instead because, as she said, I gave Bigsby to you and you got to keep it. Bat's middle name, Alexander, was the same as his dad's middle name. And all four of them, Dad, Mom, Janie, and Bat, were Tams, even though they didn't all live together in one house. The rain had turned into a gentle mist, and Dad had his windshield wipers turned on to their lowest setting. You know what we need on a chilly day like this, Dad asked. What? Bat replied. Well, I was thinking that after we pick up your sister, we could all go to Coco's to get some hot chocolate. Do you like that idea? Coco was the name of Bat's favorite coffee shop downtown. It was nestled in between a bookstore that also sold stuffed animals and a shoe store. Okay, said Bat. They drove under a little bridge and through downtown because of the rain. Fewer bicyclists crowded the streets. And it didn't take Bat's dad very long to get to Janie's school. Bat recognized her right away. She was standing near the corner wearing her bright yellow rain slicker. Bat admired the way she looked. Like a shiny yellow sun. Hi, Dad, said Janie. She tossed her backpack into the seat next to Bat, and they slid into the front seat, slamming the door. Hello, my girl. How was your day? Bat relaxed in the back seat as Janie told Dad about her day. He didn't listen to the words of what she was saying, but he liked the way her voice went up and down like music. Dad's voice was nice, too. It was lower than Janie's, and it didn't go up and down very much. It was like a straight line. At Coco's, Bat spilled some of his hot chocolate on a shirt when he took off the lid to add cinnamon. Be careful, sport, said Dad, which was a dumb thing to say because the hot chocolate was already spilled and being careful now wouldn't unspill it. Bat couldn't enjoy the taste of his drink at all because the only thing he could think about was the wet, uncomfortable stain on his shirt. Dad's apartment was in a complex that had a pool and a workout room. Kids under 13 weren't allowed to use the workout equipment, which Bat thought was unfair. He really wanted to try the treadmill. The apartment was on the second floor. There was an elevator, but Bat prefer preferred to take the stairs. He liked them because there were two sets of 11 stairs, and 11 was his favorite number. One day, he would be 11, which felt like an exciting thing to be. At the top of the stairs, they turned right and walked around the corner. Then Dad unlocked the door of apartment 2A, and they all went inside. Home sweet home, said Dad. It didn't feel like home, and it didn't smell sweet. It smells like onions in here, Janie said, wrinkling her nose. That's because the slow cooker made dinner for us, Dad said. Chili! Bat didn't like chili. Dad knew he didn't like, like it. Bat didn't like mushy foods except for oatmeal with brown sugar. I don't like chili, Bat said. Maybe you'll like it tonight, Dad answered. I tried a new recipe. Unless the new recipe was for... A chili that didn't include any chili, Bat would not like it. Bat sighed and shrugged off his backpack. It was going to be a long weekend. Chapter 12 Finally On Monday afternoon, after Miss Kiko rang the bell, Bat walked outside as fast as he could without running. Running was not allowed in the school hallway. Bat couldn't wait to go home to his very own room. He couldn't wait to see the baby kit again. He had called Mom every day to ask about the kit, and she had called him each night to tell him a story before he went to sleep. But now, finally, he would get to see the kit and smell its fur and feed it with a dropper, and maybe Mom would even let him name the kit. He had thought all weekend about a good name, and he thought he had finally had the perfect one. He couldn't wait to tell Mom. But Mom's burgundy station wagon wasn't in the line of waiting cars. Israel's mom was there in her tall blue van, and Jenny Pearson's grandmother was there in her little green bug. One by one, Bat watched his classmates climb into cars. Blue cars, white cars, black cars, clean cars, and dirty cars. No mom car. 
Suddenly, Bat felt a hand on his shoulder. It was a man's hand, and with three silver rings, Mr. Grayson's hand. Your mom must be running late, huh, Bat? asked Mr. Grayson. Up close like this, Bat noticed a line of hard, short little hairs just sprouting above his teacher's upper lip. Was Mr. Grayson trying to grow a mustache? Mr. Grayson, Bat said, did you know that gorillas can catch human colds and other illnesses? Is that so, said Mr. Grayson. It is, said Bat, sometimes when Bat was nervous about something, like right now. When he was nervous about where his mother was and why she was late, he thought about interesting animal facts. Well, did you know, said Mr. Grayson, that if you lift a kangaroo's tail off the ground, it can't hop? Yes, said Bat. Doesn't everyone know that? Mr. Grayson laughed. The stubby little hairs above his lip bopped up and down. Maybe so, he said. Bat considered whether he should tell Mr. Grayson that his mustache looked like a lot like a caterpillar. But just then, Mom pulled up in her burgundy wagon. She waved and honked her normal three friendly honks. There she is, said Mr. Grayson. I know, said Bat. I can see her. Mr. Grayson sighed and rubbed his finger along his upper lip. Okay, Bat, he said. Have a good afternoon. He waved at Bat's mom before walking away across the parking lot to his own car. It was a little orange coupe, usually dusty, but clean today because of the rain over the weekend. Matt opened the back door of the station wagon and climbed in, slipping out of his backpack before he shut the door. Hello, Bat, said Mom. Hello, said Bat. He buckled his seat belt. You're late. I know, Mom said. I'm sorry. She turned around from the front seat to smile at him. I missed you, she said, then turned back around and started driving toward home. I missed you too, Bat said. Dad made chili and wouldn't let me watch the Animal Channel because there was a basketball game and Janie was busy all weekend practicing that song for her stupid play. Janie loved to sing and dance and act and she was getting ready to audition for the role of Alice in Alice in Wonderland, her school's spring play. Is she getting good at the audition song? Mom asked. I don't know, Bat said. How is the baby kit? Is he at home? Yes, said Mom. I set up an enclosure for him in the living room. Like baby cakes enclosure? Not that big, Mom said. As they turned the corner into their street, Plum Lane, Bat saw Janie up ahead on the sidewalk. He could tell it was her by the way her dark brown ponytail swung side to side. Her hair was thick and thick and straight like a horse's tail, which is why Bat liked it, even though he would never tell Janie.